Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you to all the witnesses for joining us today. I think many Americans are, are right to be alarmed at the rapid increase of political activism and, and bullying among our nation's top corporations. Rather than focusing on the well-being of their employees, customers, and shareholders, there have been a, lot, a notable number of examples of large companies using their market power to push far, less, far left political causes at the expense of everything else. Predictably, this has led to discrimination against hardworking families who disagree with those causes being pushed. Uh, and whatever your political views, I think we can all agree that it isn't good for American capitalism to have our most known brands bullying certain Americans for holding mainstream beliefs. I believe many of the current proposals from the left involved a stakeholder primacy would make this problem even worse by mandating that companies partake in these unfair activities. When it comes to the different metrics being proposed, like environmental impact or some of the ESG scores, I'm concerned about how these will be implemented. I mean, the 53% of the U.S. households that own publicly traded stock are best served when companies focus on building good companies that are profitable, not by getting investments into profitable companies through ambiguous ESG scores. To recover from our current economic catastrophe uh, that the Democrats and President Biden have steered us into over the last year, we need permanent policies that encourage active participation by U.S. investors to drive economic progress rather than divisive policies like stakeholder primacy that would put American families last and special interest groups first. Dr. Rao, I mean, do you think stakeholder primacy would lead to companies implementing private ESG scores for customers, maybe similar to a credit score, but instead of rating credit worthiness, rating a person's or customer's so-called ESG risk? Well, th thank you very much for the, for the question. Uh, that's an interesting idea. Just so I understand, are you referring to the idea that companies would then rate their customers uh, on alignment with certain values and then would potentially exclude or discriminate against those customers? Or, or avoid doing business with them at all? Uh, if they didn't match the score that maybe come back to reflect on them? Well, that's, that's an interesting idea, uh, and it would be a, certainly a very, very dangerous trend if that were to happen, the idea that a company would uh, discriminate against an individual because of the political beliefs that they hold uh, would be quite concerning. What, what, one place where you could imagine that happening uh, at, a, uh, at, 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 a, at another level would be um, uh, also with suppliers. I'm going to choose to buy from only from companies that, uh, that sign on to a certain statement of ethical values that I also agree with. I think this is all very detrimental to the forces that have made the United States economy the strongest economy in the world and one that has also delivered extremely broad-based growth to after-tax, after-transfer incomes uh, for individuals, and it also would be extremely disturbing. Now, I would wonder if such practices would actually be thought of as being uh, legal. Is a company allowed to discriminate uh, against a customer? I don't know. I would have to uh, turn to, 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 to legal experts on that, and uh, at least one thing that can potentially constrain companies is the law. Um, do you think that uh, you know, com U.S. companies could use ESG to maybe discriminate against Americans in general for like a political belief or, or their affiliations? It's not, it's not impossible. I, you know, it's, certainly, it, it, it seems that one could have a situation where companies could attempt to only uh, work together with people who you know, sign on to certain values that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that they hold on, uh, uh, on the front of, 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 of ESG. And if they did so, it would be uh, quite a disturbing development. I, I will say one constraint would be that you know, do, do, do companies really want to uh, give up potential customers? Are they willing to hold on to these beliefs so badly that they're willing to give up potential, uh, potential customers? I, I, I don't know. I mean, one of, the, uh, one of the forces that has produced, you know, good ethics from, from, from companies in, uh, in many settings is actually the force of knowing that um, uh, they, they want to have a, uh, they want their product to be bought by as many people as possible, and they want to have a good reputation among the, the American public in general. It's and pretty costly to shut off your, um, uh, your, your, your the potential uh, customer base by some very large percentage uh, to, by shutting off people who don't agree with some of these uh, principles, which, as I mentioned in my testimony, it seems to me that there are many of these inherited wisdom ESG principles uh, that are not actually well supported in polling data. Yeah, I, I mean, we've had a lot of discussion lately about banks and others that may not do business with uh, uh, certain companies or certain industries. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, stockholders own the company 
and whether they're moms and dads or retirees uh, or, or pensions, and they deserve to be able to, to manage their the productive use of their property. So thank you, and I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thank you.